Welcome to Talking Giants Player Profiles and Projections. Today we've got very key backup, Devontae Booker, running back. 5'11", 219 pounds, 29 years old. Fourth round pick out of Utah by Denver. Spent the last uh, last year with the Raiders. Was the first free agent signing of 2021 for the New York Giants. Was Devontae Booker himself with a two-year, $5.5 million contract. And a move that upset a lot of people, but I, it was very quick for a running back who really didn't like garner that contract. But they do have big, like some, somewhat big plans for him. Um, in 2020, he had 93 carries, 423 yards, three touchdowns, four and a half yards per catch, um, 17 catches for 84 yards, not a lot of yards per catch. Essentially, his 2020 was six carries and 27 yards a game with one catch with it. And honestly, Justin, that's where I think he's going to end up again in 2021 with the Giants. Yeah, and six carries per game, to average that, I feel like it's pretty pretty generous. And we talked about that a while back as, you know, we're we're at least Bobby Skinner and Justin Pennick, and we're we're trying to convince all of you who are listening that Saquon Barkley will at least be eased back to start the season. And hopefully he's ready to rock and roll as the season, you know, Go, goes forth and hopefully Saquon the, the yard the attempts per game will continue to go up but yes yeah, six per games kind of a lot for a backup where Josh Jacobs is the number one and Josh Jacobs was supposed to be like the workhorse last year and I, I did a lot of fantasy football prep and Jacobs was supposed to be the guy the workhorse it was him and Miles Sanders and of course um, you know Jacobs had a little bit of a better year but Booker was there and he took up a lot of space um, Bobby Devontae Booker is always going to have somewhat of a sour taste in my mouth because of just the, the utter reaction that I think we all had that he was the first free agent. But in retrospect, looking back, knowing what we know about Saquon Barkley, it maybe does make sense that it's like, hey, the Giants, they want to get their backup running back and they don't want to be in a John Hillman situation where they just have nobody or they're relying on a sixer or they're relying on Gary Brightwell being the guy that's going to help ease Saquon Bar- Barkley back, right? Well, I think it's they very clearly viewed backup running back as a as a big need for them because at that time they knew they were going to ease Saquon yeah. back in where I I think myself at the time was like, just freaking work Saquon into the ground, but they're not going to do that. Yeah. And they didn't want to, you know, wait to the draft, you know, and be like, oh, we'll, we'll just – like you never want to go into the draft and be like, all right, we're going to he- fill a huge need with – uh, a fourth round pick you know if it's your if you're picking fourth overall you could be like okay like pretty sure we're gonna get the left tackle we want here but you know you don't want to get your backup running like go into the draft like we have to get our backup running back and i do think they overpaid for him but i think it was simply it's like we're not going to wait around and look for a bargain deal we want we're gonna uh, we have targeted who we want to be our backup running back that's Devonte booker he does a little bit of everything and he's he's the guy we want over uh wayne gallman who Maybe better as like a just as a volume runner, but like Devontae Booker, I think is a better all around player than Wayne Gallman. Yeah, that was going to be my next question to you. Kind of like just just flat out, who who's the better football player? But there is a little bit more of a nuanced question. Um, you looks like you want to say some good. Well, I was never the biggest Wayne Gallman fan. I know you know we we you know we would joke about Gallmanites and Alfredites, but you know for me the reason I didn't like Wayne Gallman that much was because. And I think this year was kind of proof of it in a sense where it's like he needs volume to be effective when he is the backup running back. He's never been effective as that. And that's how he made himself, you know, he was inactive week two when, she, when, uh, when Saquon went down. That's why, you know, Pat Shermer, the, you know, the year before was going to Buck Allen as, as, as the backup running yeah. back uh, over Wayne Gallman. So Booker is like, I, I think if you're like, all right, we're just, we're just thinking of giving this guy 16 carries a game, Booker versus Gallman. I probably would go Gallman. But Booker, when you add in the blocking, the him not needing volume, and you could throw in special teams in there. I don't know how good a special teams is. I just know he's done it a lot. I, I would much rather take Booker um, at a contract that if we signed Wayne Gallman to a two-year, $5.5 million deal as when free agency started, I think a lot of people would have been praising that deal. I wouldn't have, to be honest, yeah. but a lot of people would have been. You know, I, I definitely would not have been because Wayne Gallman doesn't offer you much. You know, he, he, right, he offers you much as a volume guy. But let's let's do a little bit of comparison to Devontae Booker and Wayne Gallman because at least as runners with the ball in their hands uh, in rushing attempts, 
they're kind of similar running backs and they kind of had like a similar year when it comes to like the advanced metrics. So yards per carry was 4.5 for Booker and uh, you know, Wayne Gallman was 4.6. So similar there average time behind the line of scrimmage. I was praising Wayne Gallman last year as, you know, even though this offensive line is, you know, it got better in terms of a run blocking unit throughout the year, but offensive line wasn't all that fantastic last year. So what you need to do as a running back, when you get the ball, just go forward. Try to fall forward, go forward, get your four yards per carry. And that's what Wayne Gallman certainly did. And I praise the average time behind the line of scrimmage for Wayne Gallman. 2.51 seconds was like the second quickest in the National Football League. Guess who was quickest, Bobby Skinner? Devontae Booker. He spent 2.5 seconds average time behind the line of scrimmage. Now, the big difference, the two big difference, and why I think Wayne Gallman's a little bit better of a runner than Devontae Booker's because of these two sets. Eight plus defenders in the box. Devontae Booker only saw eight plus defenders in the box 17% of the time versus Wayne Gallman saw eight plus defenders in the box 40% of the time, which, hey, if there's a stat the Giants need to improve at, it's uh, let's not have eight plus men in the box 40% of the time this year because I think Chiefs just didn't respect the Giants' ability to throw the ball deep because they didn't do it enough. But that's a different conversation for another day. And the yards after the contact, the fact that, Devontae Booker had eight plus defenders in the box, probably at an average rate, and he only got two yards after contact per attempt. Or Wayne Gallman, they were stacking the box on him almost every attempt, and Wayne Gallman was averaging two and a half yards uh, per after contact per attempt. So, um, yeah, there you go. There's some advanced stats for you. Yeah, so I, I agree with you. I think as runners, like they're both not going to dance behind the line of scrimmage. They know where they want to go. They hit cutbacks very similar, where it's like, okay, you know. Maybe if I let this play develop, I can get out on the edge. Like, they're never trying to get out on the corner unless it's a very, like, developed, let's, we're getting this outside on the edge. Um, he's going to run through arm tackles. I think Gallman, like you, and you mentioned it with the stats, is more of like, I'm pushing your ass, I'm pushing this pile where Booker's more just kind of running through the arm tackles. But at the same time, I think Booker's got a little more juke to him. Nothing crazy. He's not going to juke anybody out of his shoes, but he's got a little bit like a, of a better cut, I think, sometimes. At the same time, not going to burn anybody. He's not a speedster. Um, but I really think it comes down to is Devontae Booker can get those 20-plus, you know, rushing yards, like, without needing 16 carries in a game. Like, there's going to be a game where Devontae Booker gets four carries and one of those is going to be a 24, 25-yarder. Where with Wayne Gallman, that almost never happened. Yeah, I'm trying to look right now. I have it um, kind of kind of in front of me here where – most of Devontae Booker's 20 plus yard rushes last year were coming from like through the right guard. Um, and he actually was pretty good running outside the tackles as well. So I don't know if the Giants want to want to run maybe a little bit more outside zone. He did have nine attempts going outside the tackle last year and he averaged like 7.2 uh, yards per carry. Um, and he also had one carry going outside the left tackle. And I believe that went for 15 yards, but um, the most explosive plays in terms of 10 plus yards. I don't know if I, I probably said 20 plus yards. The most explosive plays that he had 10 plus yards came from going through the right guard. And by when he ran past the right guard, he averaged about 5.6 yards per carry. And similar to Saquon Barkley, Booker does have more of a tendency to be better when he's rushing to his right than to his left. And I need to find out if that's like just a trend among all running backs, because if you're carrying the ball with your right hand, you have the left hand to stiff arm. That's at least my theory stiff arm. It's easier for you to fall forward when you have the defender kind of crashing on you on your non ball carrying side. So, Hey, he's better running to his right. So, Hey, um, you know, Matt Parrott, Will Hernandez, get ready to rock and roll. And whenever the play is going to the left, uh, Shane Lemieux, Andrew Thomas, you got to mull some guys a little bit more. Faux show. Yeah, so as a runner, he, he's solid enough. As a receiver, capable but not anything special. In fact, you could probably make an argument that Corey Clement, um, who, you know, is my favorite to win running back three, um, is pr probably a better receiver. So nothing special as a receiver. But where I will say, it's like he's a pretty good blocker. You know, like it's hard to find a, a ton of blocking reps, but, I, you know, I did find as much as I could. Um when I did his film breakdown, when they signed him, it's like, and he did a good job mentally and physically, like physically he was able to hold up blocks and mentally like picking up some blitzes. And, you know, with Saquon, I think it's more mental than physical with Saquon, you know, like you, you all, you'll remember the clip of Jamal Adams pushing him back. But it's like most of Saquon's really big gaffes in the blocking game were, were mental. Like that one, like Pittsburgh, his issues were, were clearly mental, not physical. 
Yeah, out of 23, I believe, I mean, PFF uh, only tacked only tacked 23 pass blocking reps that Devontae Booker had this past year. That's probably wrong. I, I guess it's not. He only allowed one sack, um, one sack and one pressure. So that's, that's pretty darn good right there. So um, if Booker, especially early in the year, you know, step in for Saquon on um, passing downs and that's maybe those are the reps that he can alleviate, even though that wasn't really the trends that Booker had for Las Vegas last year. He was mostly a first and a second down back. And I guess Jacobs, who was their number one back, he would mostly be in for the third downs because he was a receiving option as well. But maybe the Giants can reverse the trends a little bit and they can have him as a third down back because of his good blocking ability. We're only when we need him to block, though. I, Correct. I want, I want our running back running routes. Yep. Routes. Um. Also, Wayne Gallman. This is this is, has also become a bash Wayne Gallman PPP un, unintentionally, but Wayne Gallman gave up a few sacks last year too. Tough uh, Arizona, Baltimore too. That came out to my mind. I'm sure there was maybe one or two others. Yeah, it was um, crazy. It was crazy how backup even Deion Lewis. Like they just you you talked about all the time and you were dumbfounded about how our backup running backs just allowed or running backs in general, a backside defenders to just come like a bat out of hell and just nail Daniel Jones and kill him. There you go, Coach Colombo. Actually, I'm not going to blame him that one on Mark Colombo. Uh, 533 special team snaps in the last four seasons, 30 kick returns. He's not going to blow you away as a returner, but he's going to play a special team. So people will tell you he's good at special teams. I don't I don't believe that anyone actually watches special team snaps, but, hey, maybe he is, maybe he's not. Anything else on Devontae Booker? Grind that special teams film, everybody. Do it. Run, I, I – I don't think I've ever really like, all right, let me watch the special teams. Now. Skip like, even the Joe time. judge report. I skipped through it and I know it Skip makes it. Me, but it's like, I got, I really got no use for this. This does not add to the talking giants podcast at all. No. All right. Um, we appreciate you guys. See you on the next one until then. Let's go big blue.